ready? Yeah. Okay, what do we do? What do we do? This is this isn't. It's a pour over, so it's been ready. You just kind of. It's been ready. We mean it's been ready. Yeah. As soon as you pour the water, it's ready. <sighs> so wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. We're not doing. Oh. Nice. Ah. Oh, so cute, so Japanese, even like a little... There's a little container for the used bags, so Aww. you don't make a mess. Some creamy powder. I just put sugar in mine, and I drink my coffee black. Oh, <laughs> I just poured cream everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap, that's all. Okay, it got more. Ah, it's getting worse. <laughs> uh, ah, look ah. at you. <laughs> oh, sloppy Americans. <laughs> oh, embarrassing, embarrassing. Oh my God. Okay, what are we drinking? What are we drinking right now? We are drinking pour over coffee. Now we are in, in Tokyo. Tokyo. We are in Tokyo, Japan. There are 5,000 great coffee houses around here, but we don't speak Japanese or know anyone here. So we're drinking coffee in our room. <laughs> well, here we are. Um, oh. It is um, January 1st. It is. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And we are in Tokyo, Japan, and this is Coffee Talk. I'm E. Casey Leiden. And I'm Esther Lin. And, um, yeah. <sighs> so, on Sunday, here, local time, around noon, we're gonna, we travel to Saitama mm -hmm. to watch Bellator's first event in mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. But let's go back a little bit, and when was the first time that we came for an MMA event in Japan. Our first time here was December of 2008. Uh, we came for the K1 Dynamite uh, New Year's Eve special. So at the time it was K1 and Dream were co-promoting for their uh, New Year's Eve show as so it was December 31st, 2008. Well, the only thing I really remember from that was the Aoki versus um, Eddie Alvarez and uh, Overeem versus Badahari and Musashi versus Musashi. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure there were a bunch of other ones on there. We just we have to give I remember um, that was the first time I'd watched. Um, they had you know the the under eighteen kickboxing matches. Oh, I remember like families and like just like like yeah. look like like dojos of like nine year olds and their little karate geese. Yeah, all cheering, and that was like part of the show. They had them all cheering and yeah, everything. people was... would come to cheer their teachers on. Um, there was like a sixteen or seventeen year old fighter named Hiroya on the card, and he's like. You know, you just he was kickboxing. It's crazy. There was a lot of like sixteen year olds kickboxing. <laughs> yeah, um, and it was just super, super good. Yeah. So that was that was bright. Was was that New Year's Eve? Yeah, New Year's Eve. So New Year's Eve, and then like maybe like two days later, Sengoku. Four right? days later. Four days later, yeah. Sengoku had their New Year's New Year's event, and um, that and that was just a bonus because just by chance we happened to be at the same hotel with Mayhem Miller, who we knew at the time. We, we met his manager, and his manager also managed uh, King Mo Lawal, who at that time I think was only 1-0, 2-0, but he was already being built as a big star in Japan at that mm -hmm. time. And so we met Mo, and then they were like, yeah, come with us. And basically, mm -hmm. they just kind of threw us on the fighter bus, and all of a sudden we're backstage at, at, at another MMA event. And I remember that just being equally incredible. Um, but that was uh, like over a decade ago, and... Um, now we're back again and um, 11 years later, 11 years later and Bellator in the cage, Ben and Saitama. What was your experience? Uh, my experience was, um, you know, the, the show itself is, is still, was still very much a Bellator show, um, but it was really nice. The crowd obviously is very different. Um, the uh, entrance ramp, they use the same one as they, they were going to use two days later in Ryzen um, and just Generally, there was like uh, kind of like a nicer feel to it. I don't yeah. know, like it's just a little, it's a little more pleasant. There was a lot less. There was a very a lot less hecklers or people just booing. There was no booing. A lot less. It was zero. Heck there was no booing, and there was um, there was not really like there was like one or two people that like you could hear some random Americans yelling. No, okay, Fuck no, no, no. You're hearing stuff. Americans. Yeah, you're hearing, yeah. But not, other than that, like um, it, it was. It was really magical and I could in, in like a really good way that I could tell just by looking at all the faces of the people who worked at Bellator. Like I looked over at Scott Coker and he was just like beaming. He was so happy to be there. Um, this was like a dream for him, I think, to, to promote an event here in Japan. It really didn't kick in. I didn't really, for me, like 
Sydney Cage side, um, I didn't go. I didn't really go. Oh man, this is really awesome. It wasn't until the first fight. It was actually go. Um, Koichi Yamauchi versus Amuchi. Darren Crookshank. And as soon as they got in there, you could hear every step. every step. I could hear both those guys breathing. I could hear everything the corner was saying. Yeah. And like it was just, it was. You're never gonna. It's never gonna be that quiet. Like even if you watch guys spar at the gym. There's other people talking, there's a radio playing, there's phones going off, there's beep, 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 you know, ring bells going off. Like, it was just these guys and the mat and every loose bolt you hear, every everything. It was just, it's it's really, I actually, I, I, I get a much, I had a much greater appreciation for everything mm -hmm. because every block, every, ugh, you yeah, hear. Yeah, you hear everything. Yeah, it was just, um, yeah, so I was like, oh, this is, this is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's cool because I feel like in a sense that it's get it, people get to watch the fight. The crowd gets to watch the fight. Say how someone like me gets to see it because I'm normally I'm the closest person besides the ref and the judges, and so I hear a lot of that stuff. But I hear things that most people don't get to hear, and um, that's the that's the benefit of doing it this way, you know, in terms of like it's quiet and you get to hear the corners and you get to hear the steps and the breath and the blocks and everything, and you know whether something landed or not. Fedor Rampage. Rampage. Let's just skip to the main event. Mm -hmm. You know, there were fun. There were fun fights up to then, but let's go. Yeah. Let's go. What what people came to see? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was actually a really solid main card. Um, actually, the yeah. I, I, how how did MVP come over? How how, how did oh the MVP? I, I thought he um, translated well to the crowd. People yeah. really liked him. Um, he didn't celebrate this time. Uh, the same way he would normally. He showed celebrate. butter during the fight, yeah. but once he won, he was very like. Right, because that's what you do here. Um, you don't rub it in people's faces when you beat someone. Um, and people were, the crowd was appreciative of that. And they actually really appreciated his uh, flair and style and um, Andy, his Naruto walkout. So, yeah, uh, yeah no, it was, uh, he, he definitely came off well in the crowd and people liked him. Yeah, I think, they, that, I think they'd, they'd love to have him back. Fedor Rampage. How many Fedor fights have you shot now? Oh, <sighs> Right, Rogers. At least ten, Bigfoot. I feel. Yeah, probably ten. Yeah. I or feel 10. like um, per, I, I think I think every American fight he's had, except for the Dan Henderson fight. Yeah. Yeah, every fight he's had in North America or but yeah, the states. Except for Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson. So this is your first time shooting Fedor, and actually Japan. Mm hmm Um. To me, I I wish I wish it was I wish he was on the Ryzen card. I want, yeah, but I, 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 but I enjoyed the walkout. I enjoyed just seeing it. Mm -hmm. I thought Rampage, I, I enjoyed the, how the camera director, like, it looks like they basically kind of shot it the same way. Like, you know, they have the cameraman runs up the ramp, you know, and meets him. And I, I, I enjoyed all that and everything. Mm -hmm. I, it felt good. I was kind of, I was kind of bummer. It was in a cage. It felt like the fight should have been in a ring. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't know. What did you feel? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, personally, I just kind of hate the round cage in general. That's just my, I, there's too many posts. It's hard to shoot through, blah, yeah, blah. Just, um, rings are just aesthetically more pleasing. That's just a fact. Yeah. Um, obviously, people have complaints about them. People fall out, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Action has to get restarted every once in a while. But there's no argument. Aesthetically, obviously, a ring is more pleasing. Yeah. However, uh, they use the same lighting rig as Ryzen. And so I thought um, that looked really great. Uh, it, it actually made the pictures look, I think, a little different. They were just softer. Um, the, the lighting grid was really soft um, and very white. Like the, it's like exactly 3200 Kelvin. <laughs> I, yeah, I noticed that. Just the colors were not, I, I felt even just to my naked eye watching it. I don't know how it looked on TV, but watching it just, something seemed brighter. Yeah. Than, nor than a normal Bellator. It event. was. It was a little brighter. Okay, okay literally, literally. I was able brighter. to shoot at a higher shutter speed. Oh, okay. This is my first time I got to see Rampage, I mean, sorry, see Fedor fight in a Japanese crowd. So, like, all those all those shots that Rampage was blocking at the beginning, mm -hmm. I'm like, like, where that camera is, you know, he's mm -hmm. that's that's where that's where the fight's happening. And I can hear mm -hmm. everything. I can hear, like, oh, from, yeah, from you Rampage. Yeah, I'm groaning. I can gro yeah. <laughs> it's, and like, I don't know, it's like, I was just like, man, Fedor still swings hard, mm -hmm. he still swings fast. And it's, I don't know, it's still, he's, 
it's still kind of magic watching. I, mean, I get, I get, he's not the same Fedor, but and of course he's forty whatever now. But, it, but it's I just still love watching it and just and getting a chance to see him in that environment, even though it's still in a cage, was awesome. And in the shot that dropped Rampage, you know, it's funny. I when I watched the video, it didn't look that. I was like, oh, it kind of just grazed his temple. But when I saw it with my eyes, I was like, boom! And I, I just like wow. And then as Rampage is going down, I don't. See, I didn't see people talking about this, but like as he's going down, I can hear. I mean, right when the fight, right when the fight ends, I can hear Rampage tell the ref, "He didn't hit me. Like I wasn't even hit. Like obviously concussed. You know, it's like I was just like he face planted. Yeah, he face planted. I mean, clearly he saw, once he saw the replay, he was like, oh okay. Mm -hmm. But it was wild. Like as soon as that shot hit him, before he hit the ground, he was already going, nope, nope. You know, I was like, man, that guy hits hard then. And like I don't care how fat Rampage is. You don't knock Rampage out of one shot to the head. You just don't do that, mm -mm. and it happened. And I, I actually, I, I didn't think I didn't. I honestly didn't think that was possible. I thought it would be some kind of weird ground and pound thing eventually, or I, like maybe yeah, something like that. I didn't think I didn't think Fader was gonna be able to one shot kill Rampage. Um, the Bell's Remain card started at noon here, which is 10 p.m. Eastern in the United States. Um, started at noon. Um, and it, you know, they had their six fight card and then, um, then Ryzen post limbs. How did the, how did the, how did the Ryzen portion of the Bellator card end? Oh yeah. So this is great. So it was Ryzen rolls in a Bellator cage. So that means there are soccer kicks and knees on the ground. And lo and behold, the very last fight of the night, the main event for the Ryzen portion of the card ends with a soccer kick. Yusuke Yachi just soccer kicks him in the face it was it was violent like it was like it was crazy and then he came to the post fight afterwards both, so of, them. Like, both of them um but yeah um there, there was it was crazy it was just a wild fight they were just swinging the yeah. whole time running around the cage and just falling all over the place and then yeah the, just that end sequence he was um actually falling right when he got soccer kicked in the face so wasn't even quite quite all the way down yet so um, but it was crazy because it's like right across from me, like at the perfect angle. Like that never happens. Yeah. And I was just like, whoa. <laughs> All right. So we're done. Jump on the train home. Very next day, we go to the fighter hotel and the very nice Western Tokyo. <laughs> and we have, we go for the, uh, ceremonial weigh-ins for oh, Ryzen. 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 Yeah, so Ryzen only has ceremonial weigh-ins. They don't, um, it's not open to the public. You know how they have like official weigh-ins at UFC in the morning and Bellator does as well. Um, and media and public are allowed to watch. Media and public are not allowed into these weigh for, for Ryzen's actual weigh-ins. Doesn't matter though, whatever. Yeah, they that's, have a, their, that's another thing. That's another thing. They have their show and they, they, they have a ceremony weigh in like a ballroom at the West End. And the way they do this is actually, uh, it's open to the public, but not to everyone. It's just to ticket it, um, VIP ticket holders. Yeah. Because it's a small room. Um, and uh, what I really enjoyed about this, and they did this actually at the Bellator weigh-ins as well, because the Rise and ticket holders, mm -hmm. I think, got to go to both shows. Um, they, uh, at the very end, they make all of the fighters stand on the stage, and then the fans come in in rows and get to take pictures with the It's the cutest fighters. thing ever. So, like... All these fighters, they, you know, they just weigh in, they get their mean face off, they go, oh, I'm gonna beat you up, you know, I'm gonna beat you up. And then they sit down, then they bring him back up, and then they go, okay. And they stand, they stand there for about 10 minutes and just rows of fans come in and they just like pose. And, they, and then another row comes in. Yep. It's it just so adorable. <laughs> it is pretty adorable. Uh, it was just a fun experience. It was just neat to be in that kind of an environment. Um, and just see someone, you know, another promotion doing doing things differently. Um, uh, obviously, they've actually been doing things the same in, in their system mm -hmm. for for many years. But um, it's just kind of refreshing. You know, it's been a really long time since I've shot a Japanese fight. So. All right. So that was on what day was that? That was Monday. That was Monday. So yesterday was Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We jump on the train to head to Saitama around noon. Yeah, we left. Around noon again. Yeah. So actually for Bellator, we left at like 10 in the morning or whatever, because we had to be there before noon. No, 
We left at 9 and No, we left much earlier. Never mind. Sorry, we left at, like, before 9. I forgot. Because we had to be there, like, by 10.30 in the yeah. morning. It takes an, a little over an hour. Um, for uh, for the Ryzen card, we left at noon to get there at 1. Um, for 3 o'clock. Opening ceremonies are at 3 yep. o'clock. Yep. Opening ceremonies. Mm, yeah. Oh. That, the pyro always gets me. That big boom. That every, that every time. Everyone's always like... <sighs> Well, just, I mean, just the lie, just, but just, we've seen this on TV and everything. It's just so cool. It is and always cool. It's just, it like, because you don't know what the, that, that's always the, you know, you can go just how boring or repetitive UFC events get. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what they're going to show on the big screen. You know, you know exactly. But this is like, you have no idea what, what this, op what the theme is going to be and everything. It was, and they do the entire card, top to bottom. They bring all the fighters out, you know, just. The opening BTR package, did you get to see that? Yeah. Yeah, that, I thought that was really good. The spray paint art. Was, yeah. Um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, so they did stencil art for the op for the um, opening graphics, and that was really neat. And then they introduced everybody on the card on it. Yeah, everyone it just, everyone got equal. Yeah, so I, so I, so you were watching, you were probably by the ring. I'm right by, I'm right by the stage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they come out and everything. And, like, actually, Johnny Case is only, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 feet away from me. And we're like, hey, Johnny. You know, and... um. You know, they're coming out, everyone's comes out and everything. And then right before the big boom happens, a, a rising a rising person comes to us and goes, like that. <laughs> We're like, what? Goes, oh shit. So everyone goes like that. And but as soon as, as soon as you go, boom. And I was like, oh my God, it was so loud. And all the fight because they weren't all the fighters. So all the fighters are like this. And like, I don't know how loud it comes off on TV, but like in the arena. It's super loud. It's 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 shaking. <laughs> yeah. If if you miss opening ceremonies, that would have just sucked. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, why come all this way? Yeah, opening why ceremonies was great. And, oh, the, and, oh, and get and getting to hear Lenny Hart mm -hmm. just say uh, scream the names. Oh, that was great. That's just that's just like like MMA heaven, you know. Yeah, just, and then the the love the crowd gave her. So this is interesting how Ryzen does. In the beginning of the show, they introduce all the officials. I love that part. So they hear hear all the referees for the night, hear all the judges, and then. They and, get up and bow. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then they had Lenny Hart get up, and then the crowd cheered for her, and they love her. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's very formal, um, but in a way that I enjoy. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Let's talk about the fights, though. Yeah, fights. Because it was a really solid card. Top to bottom was so amazing. So it started with the lightweight tournament. Um, Johnny Case versus Tofik Musayev, and then uh, Pitbull versus Luis Gustavo. Both of those fights, I think, end under ninety seconds. I mean, yeah, I think both were under ninety seconds. Yeah, it was just it's just boom, straight up. I feel like since both guys who well, every all four of those fighters knew, I think all four all four all four of them, you know what, win or lose is isn't going past the first round because we have to fight again. Mm -hmm. So those both both guys just came out swinging and just like just two big knockouts and a soccer kick knockout. Yes, and then. I don't know. Just it was just fun, and it was really nice. The crowd was into it, and you know what? I really my favorite one of my favorite things is that when the fighters come out, the Bellator fighters especially, when they come out through the big screens and then the pyro and stuff, they all turn around and look at it, and they're like, "Oh wow!" Kind of just like check out where they are. Yeah, it's just like it's like oh my god, my name has never been that big. My face is like gigantic. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the screens open up, and mm -hmm. they come back, and it's like, ah, I know. I just I was like, you just look at those guys, like man, like I, I hope they. I mean, I, I was actually, I'm always nervous. Like, man, how do you soak it all in? But at the same time, oh my God, I got to get in a freaking fist fight in like two minutes, you know? So either you soak it in and it goes, works to your advantage or not. I don't know. It just Yeah. And then after the, oh, so after the lightweight fights was Miyu Yamamoto um, versus Amp the Rocket. Um, and uh, that was, you were, we were talking about this earlier in the sense that that was like the most Japanese fight on the card in terms of me, Yamamoto is not a world beater. We all know yeah. this. She's not like the top. She's not a top strawweight or atomweight or whatever weight class she was fighting at. But um, that doesn't matter because she's on the card for storylines. She's yeah. on the card because the Yamamoto family. Yeah, you know, yeah very famous martial uh, arts family. Yeah. Because of her brother. And so it was really... Uh, but that doesn't... It's not a bad thing. She's, a, she's also a very good wrestler. And it was just really... Um, they somehow made it... Um, I don't know. It was a good competitive uh, fight. They mm -hmm. they found you know, um, Amp has actually fought in Ryzen a couple times, um, 
And I, and I thought it was really nice to see, it's just, um, it's, a, it's an emotional side of the, of the fight game. And the, oh they, yeah, they, the opening package was like all people crying. Yeah, I was, we were, um, I, when we watched the opening package, just Japanese MMA, MMA, how they, how they promote things. I was, I was watching it with, um, the manager, um, Dan, uh, Danny Rubenstein, mm-hmm. and they were showing all these fighters lose. They were showing tension getting knocked out, you mm-hmm. know, by Mayweather and things like uh-huh. that. And I was like, man, I love how they sell losses because it's all about how you come back. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. It's like, ah, oh, anyone can win. And, oh, I won. Mm-hmm. They show a little bit of that, but, it's, they, they, but the real storyline is coming back and persevering. Mm-hmm. And it was just, um, it's just so different. It's, it's, it's just really, yeah. It's just so different. It's a totally different uh, environment and things, thing, what they find important yeah. to, to a fighter. Um, but yeah, I just really enjoyed it. After it was after me, it was Patrick Mix. Yeah. And he looked super impressive. Um, How good is Patchy Mix? Pretty damn good. I, and we haven't even seen his striking yet because people always grapple with him. Yeah. Um, and he's an extremely good grappler. So um, actually, Yuki Matoya is a very good grappler. So that was um, I was surprised. I was actually really surprised at how quickly that was finished. Yeah, like like I've heard stories about how good he is. Coaches talk, but like man, like he seemed ready for him, wants it. Like mm-hmm. like like he, he think he, he said what he went he let twelve and zero as a pro and eleven eleven and zero as an amateur. Amateur, so he's on like a twenty something fight win streak. Yeah, in his, in his mind, you know that's what he, I'm on a twenty fight so I mean win streak. And like he's like he wants that belt. Mm-hmm. He wants he wants if he can get the rising belt, he'll take it. He wants that belt draw belt, obviously, because he's part of, he's part of the organization. Man, I think um, I think I, I I think he's gonna be one of the top two or three breakout stars next year. Yeah, I think he's that good, and um, he's he's an exciting finisher, and and we I, we have and we haven't even had, we have, he hasn't even had to use his hands yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what was after that? So many. God, there were so many good fights. Um, was it Jake Hume and Satoshi Ishii after that? I don't know. I feel like there were there were so many fights. Jake Hume's walkout was amazing. Yeah, Jake. His Freddie Mercury walkout. Um, killer uppercut. The, the, the killer sh- uppercut. I mean, just the action. All of it was good. It's actually so good that it's like my brain is actually overflowing and there's just too much going on because we were at the arena till like. Two, two, a little past two a.m. last night. We didn't get back to our hotel room until four a.m. Yeah, um, so, because it takes an hour. Yes. So, so um, yeah, it was just we were. By the time we got back, we we're like, uh, I think fights happened. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing and it was great, and I had like this, um, this uh, kind of joy. Um, and it, I want to. This is something that I, I feel like I should say later, but I, I'm thinking of it now. Um, one of the things that happens to me after I watch um, a night of fights is I, you've noticed this in me. I'm really sad the next day. Like I'm happy if it's a kind of exciting event or whatever. But for the most part, I watched a lot of people get beat up and it weighs on my uh, emotions and it actually makes me sad the next day. Um, but this wasn't like that. Um, I woke up this morning, even after only four hours of sleep, and I was ready to go. Yeah. Um, because I was excited and I wanted to share everything that I saw last night. Um and just overall, like the lightweight tournament with the ending with Tofik and Pitbull, Patricky was so such a good fight. It was so crazy. And then when Patricky fell through the ropes, he hurt his shoulder, yeah. but he didn't want to stop fighting. So they kept going. Just oh, everything. Just like every element of it was awesome. And then the belts are so cool looking and um, the very odd formality of the the flower bouquet for people t- t- yeah. title challenging, um, all of that stuff. Just yeah, yeah, I mean, every fight was good when they, when they hit the main card after the big intermission. Um, okay, let's talk about intermissions real quick. Yeah, <laughs> everyone loves to complain about intermissions, and I get it, man. We we were those people. We watched. We had to suffer those forty five minute intermissions, man. But when you're there live, you understand it because yeah, basically, what, you go to a UFC pay per view. Essentially, they put intermissions, little 10-minute intermissions there between every fight. Mm -hmm. In Japan, if it's a 30-second knockout or a full three-round fight, as soon as that fight ends, boom, next video package comes on. Mm -hmm. So it just keeps going and going and going. So you're there. 
So at the opening ceremonies, you watch seven fights. That's three out, three and a half hours or so. Yeah, you want to get up because actually it's, it's kind of considered not rude, but unless you have to get up, you kind of you you sit there and watch, you know. And yeah, well, also just most people just sit and watch, and then yeah. it gives them time. You you get up, go eat, go to the bathroom, and you do all that stuff like. You can leave the. You can actually leave the arena. You can actually leave the, leave the arena, arena because back. there's a bunch of restaurants right around there. Because yeah. it's about a forty-five minute break. So yeah, people leave like they're they take their time. It's not like yeah, you know. And then you come back in, and um, it's it's a totally different. Plus, listen, they they know it's an all day event, mm-hmm. so the breaks are built in on purpose. Yeah. Um, and obviously it sucks for us because when we're at home, it's like four a.m. Yeah. or five a.m. and you're like, oh my god, I can't can't stay up before it. watch forty five minutes of replays. Um. But you get it when you're here, yeah. and that's fine. But yeah, that actually reminds me of the thing we were talking about, though, is that if you're a true MMA fan, you know, people always like, pride never die, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> people should make the pilgrimage out here to to watch a big Japanese event. Um, because I think it's just different. If you're, no, if, if you're an MMA fan, save up a couple thousand bucks. And seriously, come out here. There's, mm-hmm. it's like you just, you just have to. I don't, I, I don't. It, like, if you're a big MMA fan, at some point, you no, know, once every five years or so, save your money, go to Vegas, go to a UFC pay per view in Vegas. Mm-hmm. If you're an MMA fan, save up your money, come here for New Year's, mm-hmm. see a big event in Saitama. Mm-hmm. You, you, you need, you need both experiences. To, yeah. To, because there are two. When they're punching each other, everything's the same, mm-hmm. but it's about everything around it, before or after, which yeah. are completely different. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and like I, yeah, I'm sure whatever you be, if you dig the UFC experience, you dig it, you know. But I think you just need to fill it all. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's always good to have um, just kind of a broader uh, palette. Yeah, and I think you can appre- and I think you can appreciate both how both both promotions sell their fights. Yeah. Better. Absolutely. Um, you know, then, so we, Japanese MMA has intermissions, all that kind of stuff. But when you're here live, it totally makes sense. We come back into the main card, right? And, um, after Tofik Musayev wins, Musayev wins the lightweight tournament. Then, uh, Reina rematches with Lindsay Van Zandt, who, Lindsay Van Zandt beat Reina in New York at Bellator New York. Um, Raina's walkout. Raina's walkout was crazy. She had rappers with her. Yeah. <laughs> and she was dancing the whole time and singing along. And that's got to be a ton of pressure. We talked about this. That's, that must be a ton of pressure. But we also spoke with Mo about this because people used to criticize him for doing big walkouts and Mayhem too. He said, no, this is like a welcome distraction. Mm-hmm. Planning this helps get my mind off of the minutia of the fight, right? So... She has this huge walkout, and it's such a dramatic fight. There's ebb and flow, and and Lindsay's. Are you saying it's dramatic MMA? What a dramatic MMA! <laughs> what a dramatic. <laughs> yeah, yes, um, and that's what I felt like all the fights had. All the fights had that kind of ebb and flow, and just kind of this amazing, like, uh, just your heart was pounding, um, and I don't know, it was just cool. And then I then we actually so then there was uh, later on the main card Ayaka Hamasaki fought Sohi Ham, and that was, oh, so high-level Adam weight MMA is freaking amazing. High-level, two, the, the two best 105-pound women are fighting inside Tama in front of, was it almost, 30, what, how many people? 30,000, 29,000 people. 29,000 people. These two 105-pound women are fighting, and the whole place was just totally en- engrossed in it. You know, there are Hamasaki chants, everywhere and it was just like it was just it was awesome it was like wow i was just and there were some there were some hamachan yeah hamachan yeah <laughs> and like 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 what why i keep saying like why i want these fans to come over and experience it like you can hear some girl from the uh the the nosebleeds you know hamachan you, you'll hear it you, you look up oh there she is and like it's just because there's no heck, I don't understand. That many people, not one person decided to go, woo, no one, <laughs> no one, the whole night for two straight nights. But not a single woo. No, well, not a single woo, not a single boo, not a single put them in a body bag, not a single fuck them up, not a single. Uh, I heard about them. From who? From an American. 
From an American. <laughs> from an American. You know, you, but... Let's go back to the fight, though. Oh, Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah, I know. Ugh. We've already, we've already I know, talked about it, this it, so much. It was just so great, but the, the sounds. We're talking about the com people coming over and stuff. Like, Yeah, I know. But, we, we, but I just wanted to talk about how good the fight was and uh, just everything about it. And also, oh, shit, we got to go back. We got to rewind. I forgot to talk about the end of Reyna and Lindsay Van Zandt because... I saw online, everyone was like, oh, early stoppage, early stoppage. And actually, the ref, Jason Herzog, didn't want to stop the fight at that moment. That's um, why he looked a little confused. Yeah. He looked a little hesitant. Right. But actually, uh, Van Zandt's corner threw in um, a, a, a qu equivalent of the towel. It, they gave them a little colored baton. So it's like a little red foam baton for the red corner, blue one for the blue corner. And they just th they threw it in. So, that's so the corner yeah. actually stopped the fight because the they, they, the fight, they yeah. thought their fighter was taking too much damage. Right. That's actually what happened. So the... Uh, that if that clears anything up for anyone, yeah. Wow. Which I didn't. Uh, at first, I was like, "Oh, where did something fight?" But then I looked down and I saw he was step uh, the, the the foam baton on mm -hmm. the thing. I was like, "Oh, okay." Wow. Yeah. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. I think yeah. That's really that's that's really if they if their corner knows mm -hmm. they know they know how much Lindsay had in her and they knew she was probably pretty tired and they even though there was only twenty seconds or fifteen seconds left, yeah. they felt. It, it takes it doesn't take very long to take some serious damage so mm -hmm. i also wonder um my my guess is that ryzen uh pays flat rates not a show and win um so and the reason why is because i feel like a lot of fighters fight with abandon there's a lot less of the like a uh, conservative grind out fight because um you get rewarded for exciting fights here um by being brought back yeah so um I actually think that that's probably why the corner was like, oh, she's just taking a lot of punishment. Let's just toss in the baton and not, not worry about when that oh. we, still, we still got paid. So, yeah, yeah, they're still, they're just there again. So the, the money doesn't, they're not making more or less money. Yeah, it just doesn't change. Yeah. So that fight was awesome. The Adam Waite championship fight was awesome. Fucking amazing. It was a super good fight. Tension. Oh, shit. Tension, watching tension. So wait, so now we're gonna throw a kickboxing match in there. Yeah, yeah, which is like, which is you know characteristic of the, of the of the New Year shows, um, or just in general. There's always like one or two kickboxing matches. So tension matches. is that little guy that threw that fight against Mayweather, right? <laughs> no, yeah, because that makes total sense, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Tension. You're if you're one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, tension is an amazing. I would say flyweight. Yeah, yeah you, flyweight. Yeah. Um, kickboxer, and he was facing Rui Ibarra, who is um, king of knockout. Uh, not knockouts a promotion here. Mm -hmm. uh, very good kick, yeah. kick, kickboxing promotion. And you know, you saw they showed all the highlights beforehand. I was like, just He's knocked out a lot of people, um, both with punches and with leg kicks, which is looks so painful. A couple people, you just see people like falling over after getting kicked in the leg. Um, and tension made him look amateur. Yeah. It was crazy. I remember hearing uh, because I I follow kickboxing, but I'm not super hardcore about it. And like the hardcore kickboxing people are like, okay, finally, Ryzen's giving um a good a good a good fight for tension. Like this guy's tough. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh wow, he made like he made that look. Like, he made that guy look worse than some of the MMA fighters mm -hmm. that, that face tension in kickboxing. Mm -hmm. It was like I, that you know from the, I was doing interviews in the back. So I so I made sure to come out to the arena to see the opening ceremonies. I saw I think Patchy Mix. I wanted to see his walkout. I want I think I saw one couple of walkouts. But the only fight I wanted to see beginning to end was tension. So I came out during um, uh, I think because uh, right before it was Hamasaki Ham. So I came out like maybe the third round. I was watching mm -hmm. it in the crowd. I hear the crowd. But the so I'm watching it backstage because the place is so quiet. But they're paying attention backstage. I could hear tension like whack 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 hitting mitts. I'm like, and I saw fans going, what is that? Like that. Yeah. And it's just like, so like, that's how quiet, because you can hear them. Like, it was just, it was, yeah. like, it was actually a bit of an echo in the, in the like, mm -hmm. whack. So, and then I kind of look over and I saw a tension, like kind of pacing, walking around. Mm -hmm. And like, I felt like, oh my God, I was like, I shouldn't be looking at this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, I'm, I'm like, like, I didn't want to get eye contact with him and everything. Cause like, it wasn't like he was all mean mugging, but he was like, pa 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 pa. Then like, there's just no walk lap. Yeah. Ba -da -da -da. I was like, I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, that was really thrilling for me. Uh, it's uh, high level kickboxing is so fun to watch and so fun to shoot. Um, and I got some crazy pictures of that fight. And uh, it was just so thrilling to watch. Um, 
so skilled and so interesting. And um, um, what what people, I don't, I don't know if people saw this part because um, I don't know what the broadcast looks like or whatever. But one of the interesting things is like, you may look at Tenshin and think, look at that little punk because you know he's really young and yeah. he's got his cool hair and yeah. whatever and his very fancy robe. And he, cel- you know, when he, he yeah. knocked this guy out and he celebrates. But then at the very end, after that, he walked straight over to the guy, Rui Abada, made sure he was okay. Um, Abada has a twin brother who also fights, you know, made, uh, made sure he was okay. And then he has, they have another brother. <laughs> so it was just like him going to each family member, bowing, talking. It was just extremely, extremely respectful. Like they immediately turn off fight mode and, mm-hmm. and go straight to like respectful martial arts mode. Yes. It's, Yeah. And I understand that's that's just kind of a weird like clash of cultures. I'm not saying one is better than the other. Maybe it's just for me because I don't know because I'm Asian or whatever. I don't know. But I, for me, I like I prefer this because um, this is why you got into it, right? Because this yeah. is why I got into it. Because yeah. we, we talked about this instance like we came here for the first time 11 years ago um, to watch a fight, um, and that's what really sold me on continuing to work in MMA. So we had just lost our jobs at Elite XC, and I was like, uh, yeah. that was kind of a fun experiment. I think I'm going to go back to working in production in Los Angeles. But when I came out here and I got to experience what MMA is here, that's actually when we started the All Lobos site yeah. um, and doing the videos and stuff like that because it was so beautiful and the aesthetics were so pleasing and the storylines were so deep that that's what made us want to continue uh, in this field. Yeah. That's yeah. It's, yeah, it was it was Japanese MMA. Yeah, that made us want us like oh, I want to I want to what they do here. Mm-hmm. I want to present my work, mm-hmm. you know your photos, my videos in the same vein as what they do out here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and and I think that that pretty much. Um, you know, but this I also want to oh, point we're out, skipping the main event by, yeah, by doing well, this, but uh, Manal Cape looked awesome against Kaya Sakura. Big upset. That was crazy. <laughs> Big upset. That was crazy. Uh, why? I, and I know for sure this is going to end up in their next highlight package. Poor Kaya Sakura was like bawling, sitting there bawling. Manal Cape comes over and like thanks him and kisses him on the forehead. Mm-hmm. And he's like serious for a second. And then as soon as Cape walks away, he just starts bawling again. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh. Uh-huh. Um, but overall, just like this is the, that was Ryzen 20 and a Bellator Japan too. It, it was, it reminded me of, um, and also going back to UFC 243, 2019 was a year of events that reminded me of why I was an MMA fan. Izzy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Izzy. 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 Izzy's yeah. breakout year. Yeah. And, you know, but, but I want to also point out too, because people are going to be like, oh, you just love Japanese MMA. It's like, actually, it's not that I love this. Like I just love, I love variety, mm-hmm. and like I don't want everyone to be like I don't, I don't want, want everyone to be same. like this. I like I want actually like that's why I loved actually as a fan I love Shinya Aoki. Yeah. Even though he's a Japanese fighter, he was an asshole. Yeah. He would break asshole. a guy's arm and then give him the finger. It's like whoa, you don't do that in Japan. You know, you don't yeah. do that anywhere. Yeah, you, know? you don't do that anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> you don't do that over here, especially. But like that's what a what, dick move. Yeah. What a dick move. But you know what? I was like. Huh. That's kind of cool, you yeah. know, because it, it creates drama. It makes it makes what a dramatic MMA, you know, yeah. and that's kind of and that's what the storylines are, because I don't I don't want everyone to be bound and respectful. If that's not you, that's not you, you know, but you're still a good fighter. You can still be you can still bow and be respectful, but suck at fighting, you know, yeah. but like, yeah, because because it's the fighting that really is what matters. Yeah, you know, it's more the variety. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say that I want to do this all the time if I was shooting uh, only Ryzen's, maybe I would get tired of the way that they work. I don't know. Um, but for me, it's a welcome change. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's nice to see how other people do things. And this is why competition is fun. Yes. So you need variety. Was this the card of the year? Ooh, I hundred percent think Ryzen 20 with only 45 minutes to spare before it hit midnight here, <laughs> yeah. was absolutely the card of the, the card of, the, of 2019. Ooh. 15 fights, not one stinker on the card. 10 of those fights were just balls of the wall. Fucking like, This was wow. the first, first Ryzen card, um, New Year's card, without any kind of like, quote unquote, freak show fight or whatever. Yeah. And they sold out. They sold out just on good MMA. That's a big deal. That actually, that actually is a, a a very undersold story here. That mm-hmm. 
I think, and this is good for Japanese promoters too, yeah. because I think they are always very okay. We gotta put this random sumo guy out there. We gotta put some random celebrity comedian yeah. out there.、Mm-hmm. Otherwise, the casuals won't watch it or whatever、yeah. you, you want to call it.、Um, but no, this was every every fight was actually put together for sporting competitive reasons. Yeah, every fight. Yeah, and, and it was very fun.、Um, and, and, and the fan that when the fan fans show, the fans、it. showed up and they enjoyed it. They, yeah, yeah, that's very yeah. They didn't. They didn't need the the random the sumo guy or yeah. whatever. Yeah.、Um, but so yeah. Overall, I would say this is pretty close to car of the year. I'm I'm hesitant to say that only because I know I have recency bias. Like that's the last thing I remember. You know, I, I can't. I have hard. I'm having a really hard time remembering the rest of the year because it was a year full of fights, full of events. We went to Australia twice. There were there there were better there were better it wasn't there was no fight of the year on it there was some good, great fights there wasn't fight of the year yeah, but solid from from the first fight till the end and you just can't I I I think everyone's like oh the what was the two thirty six two thirty six with the two title fights yeah clearly those two title fights were freaking awesome but go look at you forget a lot about the early fights another easy fight too yeah、actually. yeah it, which was fight of the year but that's yeah another thing、um, I just I love the card I hope.、Um, Everyone at home, sit down, watch begin to end, enjoy the whole eight hour experience. Don't don't just watch the gifts and then try to watch the whole experience. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I, and、um, save up your money, fly out to Japan, and come out and visit here, and don't be an asshole, and enjoy the enjoy the culture out here. Yeah, I, I think、um, and、uh, and if you can't make it all the way out here, eh. You know, one pay per view, watch yeah, it. Yeah, or do twenty bucks. Twenty bucks、it. is pretty inexpensive <laughs>、yeah. for a, for an eight hour pay per view. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it's totally worth it. Yeah. Wow, this has been a fun coffee talk. It has. Oh, and the sun went down all all while we were in here. Oh.、Uh, um, yeah, I'm so glad actually that we got to make it out. To Japan this year, since UFC isn't having their New Year's show, it, it really o- opened up、um, opened up this year for for travel and、uh, to to have new experiences. And, and we're entering a new decade, so it's really nice to have、um, this is, kind of like I don't know palate cleanser, I guess. Yeah, for the, a new decade. And this is great for Japanese MMA, and、yeah. like、this it was a giant good, success. Good forecast, yeah. Good forecast, and、um, uh, hoping hope hoping for good things. Hoping for good. Yeah. All right. Well,、um, this has been coffee talk. This has been coffee with EKC Leiden. That's Esther Lin. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Subscribe here. Click like. Join our Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. Beep bop boop bop.